had a website, but it wasn't, it was just, it was almost like a vanity project back then. Now it is like an entrance fee to have a business. Good. Hey, I wanted to let you know that the Google guarantee, the Google ads, man, I'm getting 12 to 16 calls a week. My goal is at least do 10 to 15 more years, grow it up, sell it for 40, 50 million, maybe more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Titan Talks. My name is Jonathan Stern. I'm an engineer at Top Line Pro, but once a week, I have the honor of sitting down with successful home service entrepreneurs to discuss their journeys to success. Today is September 15th, 2023, and my guest is Josh Thompson of JT's Painting. Josh pretty much does it all, from interior to exterior painting, cabinet refinishing, staining, and even drywall. He's been with Top Line Pro for about two years now, and we're very excited to hear about the evolution of his business over that time, as well as where he sees the trades going in the coming years. Josh, thanks so much for taking the time. Welcome to Titan Talks. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me, man. It's a, it's a real pleasure, for sure. Let's get started with an origin story. Tell us, how'd you become a painter? Um... I was working with my father. We were uh, we were actually a cleaning service. We cleaned windows, we pressure washed houses, and then customers, you know, of his would have us do interior, exterior painting. And and I just grew more of a knack for the painting than the cleaning kind of aspect of it. And uh, you know, one thing led to another, and just started doing more painting side work on my own. And then there it is. You know, I just, I just like, like painting, you know? When was this, Josh? How long ago? Boy, uh, I probably started working with my father. I was 17. I'm 35 now. So 18 years ago. 18 years. And and when did you make the switch to painting? Um, I've probably been painting every single day now for the last eight years, I'd say. Yeah. Did you start the business, JT's painting, right away? Did you go and no. work for um, someone else? I guess how how'd you get started as a business owner? And um, was that always your idea to become a business owner? I mean, I always had the idea of a bigger picture. You know what I mean? Always was like when I worked for people, always the lead guy, you know, quality hmm. control, even outside of working for my father, when you know, just store managers, whatever. Um, and I guess, I don't know. I just got sick of working for other people, yep. you know? So I decided to dive into it on my own. I got cold feet my first year. So I, I would technically say I'd been in business for four years, but I got kind of cold feet and went back to work for somebody else. And then it just didn't work out well. So then I decided to, you know, just dive right into it and not give up i imagine it wasn't easy in the early days tell us about what's one thing you did to get the business off the ground so i mean the business was always always slowly um i mean i, I was gradually building it i i was working for other people full-time and doing work at night and on the weekends i was always hustling always hustling so and then it got to the point where my phone was just ringing, 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 and I couldn't commit to working full time for somebody else anymore. And I just had to commit to these jobs full time and and just go all in. Got it. So by the time you, you really started out on your own, you'd built up that client base. You'd built up your name in the area. And um, it was pretty smooth sailing right from the get go. I wouldn't say smooth sailing um, because it's, it's always a hustle, man. I mean, even, even now, you know, you get the transition from uh, we're in upstate New York and everybody just went back to school. So people are trying to kind of get in their houses together. So the phone calls kind of slowed down a little bit, but um, you know, th I'm sure that'll pick back up here within the next week or so. It's just, you get a little bit of a drought, um, but it's always been a hustle, man. It's all, not, nothing's ever, you know, as easy as it looks, you know what I mean? How did you get your first job, Josh? 
Uh, my fiance actually was a uh, a clerk at a at a local store here, a convenience store. A guy that would come in all the time, buy coffee, and her and they would just you know talk back and forth, talk back and forth. And he gave me an opportunity to, to paint one of his rental units, and then from there it was just you know slowly working my way up, just uh, letting people know if they needed work done, I was their guy. Is he a repeat customer or was that a one and done thing? And no, no, I've I've done a few more jobs for him. Um we've actually, you know, scaled out of his budget range. So now he just calls me for we 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 talk all the time. He'll call me for, you know, um pointers and whatnot, because sometimes he'll just do the painting itself, you know. You know, they say everybody can paint, but not anyone can paint, you know what I mean? Oh so, yeah. But we still keep in contact. I mean I just actually spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. Nice. You said scaled out of his budget range. Does that mean that your prices have increased? The sorts of jobs that you're doing over time has changed. Um, tell us about the evolution over the last two, three years. Actually, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of both. Well, a lot of both. Um, you know, we try to fluctuate with the, the times, you know what I mean? Um, just like the price of gas changes and think, you know, we have to fluctuate with the economy. So, I mean, the price of paint has gone up three times this year alone. Um, the, say, I'm, I'm sorry, say that the price of paint has gone up three times. In yeah, just, the cost it, of just, just this year. I heard so, about it. Unbelievable. Yeah. I um, mean, yeah, crazy. So, um, but we've tried to transition more of doing like the, the lower end jobs into, you know, more high-end clientele, like the fine finishing cabinets and, and just, um, you know, a higher, higher level than uh, what people that have just rental units want. What would you say the hardest thing was um, two, three years ago as you were just starting out? Finding workers that um, give the same quality that I, that I expect. You know, because not everybody, you know, I mean, I've I've met painters for 20 years that they're just their quality is not as as high level as, you know, I'd like it to be. Um, And it it's just I, I expect more. So. You know, try to get away from that, uh that stigma of of, like I said. They, the saying is everybody can paint, but not anyone can paint. I try to get away from that stigma. You know, the painters are kind of like the the lower level in the construction field. We get walked on, you know what I mean? So um, we, I try to hold a higher standard for our company. We're not just painters. You know what I mean? What distinguishes you from, from the rest of the pack? It, it's a quality thing, right? Yeah, I mean... There, there's definitely I'm not I'm not saying there's there's a good handful of guys out here and uh, you know in our area that do good quality work you know we we're friends we speak all the time you know um I guess what separates me is I I try to just one job at a time you know trying to I'm trying to pave the path right now I don't trying to take on more than I can handle as far as multiple jobs going on at the same time I just try to start one stick to it and finish it and and then go on to the next make sure each each and every customer is happy with uh the quality that we're putting out great on that note let's let's turn to business today i'm curious how many employees do you have working with you uh there's only two of us right now well three there's three of us i have a secretary and then and then there's two of us that work in the field how many jobs on the schedule right now We probably got about a month or so's worth of work right now. Oh wow! With a couple still in the air that I gotta gotta try to dial in. So if I had a brand new living room, I I couldn't book you for for a month. Is that right? Potentially, um, we're we're ending the we're we're getting towards the end of our exterior season right now, and the rain has not been too nice to us here in New York this year, so. <laughs> Um, for small jobs like that, I basically just tell people 
uh, we're a month booked out, but we can keep you tentative if something comes up where it looks like we're getting rained out. I can, you know, reach out a few days in advance and see if it works in their schedule. Sure. How'd you get those jobs? What's the breakdown in terms of um, where you're sourcing new work? We got a couple of ads running on Google right now. Um, obviously, we have the website through you guys, which is linked right to the Google. You know, if you Google painters in upstate New York, we're, we're going to come up. Um, our, our reviews are top notch. We get five star reviews and then just word of mouth and, and working with the uh, the local paint stores, you know. I mean, you got to be good friends with the people that supply the paint. So they, you know, and then they offer you, you know, somebody comes in, hey, I need a painter. Oh, Josh over at JT's painting. Give him a call. So um, how has the breakdown changed over time? Would you say you're getting more work from the website and Google now than when you just started out? Definitely, definitely. You know, the more exposure getting as far as uh you know people going on and leaving reviews and you know that's and not everybody that calls us can afford us but they they they're ex they're intrigued by the what they read as far as the reviews because that's the day and age we're in right now you know you go you want to look for a good restaurant you pull out your phone and you look for good food near me and you look at the reviews you're not going to go for the guy that's got you know all the food came out late and warm and you know what i mean you're you're looking for the hot food exception, you know, exceptional service on time. I'll tell you, I, I really don't remember the last time I went to a new restaurant without checking the reviews. They're just so important. Exactly. So yeah, they really to are top, top notch reviews, high quality customer service, delicious food, great paint jobs, all that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Anyone, anyone who's, uh, I think going out for a fancy meal or painting the living room, painting the entire outside of their house, um, they're going to check the reviews. And so you'd better, you'd better have a strong Google presence. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about um, your Facebook presence. Does that, uh, cause I saw you had a Facebook page as well. Is that a driver yeah. of traffic or is that just something you got to have in addition to Google? And I wouldn't say it's necessarily something we have to have, but we've, I've had it ever since. I started this this uh, painting thing. I actually had the JT's painting page before I had an actual business. Um, and, you know, I mean, social media is another thing. It's just like Google. You know, you get all now you got on social media, you got all these different like groups that you can be in for different areas. You know, I'm not sure where you guys are located, but you'll get like the the group for Albany or Schenectady or Rotterdam and they're looking for painters and, you know, so we try to we try to be, you know, involved in all that. Um just the 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 most exposure that we can get. Yeah, I, I was looking on Facebook. There are several paint groups with hundreds of thousands of members. Are you in are you in any of those? Yeah, I'm in quite a few of the painting groups just for, you know, um, more knowledge, always trying to, you know, because because this this painting is always evolving. There's always new stuff coming out. And in order to, uh, you know, st stay relevant, you got to roll with the punches and, and, and evolve. So what's one thing you, you learned from one of those big painting groups, um, people sharing their stories, tips, tricks? What have they taught you? Oh man, I'm always learning from these guys. Uh, so for one, like when we're doing exteriors, like this one behind us, for example, um, we're going to spray it. And instead of, you know, masking off the roof line, I'll take like cardboard shields and I lift the shingle up just a, just a little bit. And I stuff the shield in there all along. And then just spray it and then pull the shields when they dry. It's that's actually something I learned from one of those groups there. What sort of effect does that have on the roof that you couldn't achieve otherwise? Well, it just minimizes your we don't want to get paint on the roof, you right. know. So that there's not gonna be no overspray because when you're spraying, it's gonna go straight into that cardboard right there. Beautiful. Any other tips and tricks? I, I'd love to hear. Oh, another. man. I mean, there's so many I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head, just trying to you know, um, I couldn't even think of one, another one right now. That was just one that kind of popped in my head as I look back, you know, um, but they're all like, 
they're always coming up with new tools and there's guys on there that aren't even painters. They're just innovators. And, you know, um, always inventing something new for speed up process because, you know, time is money. So the faster you can get a job done and more precise then your profit margin, you know, is higher. So you, you've taken the the time to get a website, get on Google, um, drive a strong Google presence. You said you're moving up market in terms of pricing and the sorts of jobs you're taking. Um, what's your goal in five years, Josh? Have more employees. Okay. Um, you know, get out of the the rut. I'd like to have a more solid schedule. Um, you know, I really look up to the guys in the in the industry that are booked out four, five, six months at a time, sometimes eight months at a time. You know, that's 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 one of my main goals right there is just to just to book up en enough solid work where, you know, um, I'm not worried about where the next job is going to come from because a month goes by fast, brother. I mean, oh, yeah. A month, it's it sounds like a lot of work, but a month goes by fast. Next thing you know, we're back. wearing coats. Month goes by, and then at the end of the month, you'd better have another month booked, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I guess my goal is to, and that's that's more of a, a goal of right now, not even five years, but, uh, you know, exposure, get more exposure, let people know, like, we're the company you want to hire. You mentioned uh, the importance of Google reviews. Every time you do a job, do you ask uh, that homeowner or that customer if they could leave a if they could leave a Google review? What's, so, your, what's your process in terms of collecting those? This website that I have through Topline Pro, if you go onto your uh, home page there, you can send the customer a review link, and it pops goes right to their you know text message or email you can email it to them and they click on it it pulls right up and then boom you can leave a review so i was i was looking at your google um and i think you had a review yesterday i was curious if if that's how you got that review if you sent the text and and that person replied right I away did. wow okay so that's one it right, there. right away but you know it's it's more easier it's it's uh normally before I found out the that rev, you know request a review was on the top line pro website um <clears throat> I would just tell the customer you know if they go on to our website there's a button that they can click and it'll bring them to Google or if they just google us but this way is so much easier because now I just send you a link you click the link boom you can leave a review yeah and the link the link goes straight to your Google page so it really couldn't be yep. right yep Josh, at Titan Talks, we like to close with a rapid fire round. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. What's your advice for other pros who are just starting out? Let's take a painter who's thinking about starting out on his own, um, has been painting maybe for two years, but wants to open up his own his own paint company. What would you tell that person? Stick to the process. Um don't get cold feet, you know, and, and just do good quality work every single time. What would you say is the biggest mistake you've made and what did you learn as a result? Hmm. Um, boy, that's a tough one. I guess it would, it would be, uh, not really a mistake, but just not, not doing this sooner not starting it sooner when, when I, you know, my, my fiance has been pushing me for years to start my own business. And I was just, I don't know, running a business ain't for everyone, you know, I have a lot of sleepless say, nights. I have to say, I hear that a lot. You know, I should have, I should have done this earlier. I should have yeah. just jumped in. Um, and it took me a little while to get the courage to, to decide finally to do it, to, to start the business. But I hear that one all the time. That's good. Yeah. What's your proudest moment, Josh? Um, 
Is there one is there one moment you can single out as as being really special? Hmm. Well, I got a 16-year-old son I'm teaching to paint. So wow. Yeah. Just trying to teach him uh the good a good value in work because there's not many workers, you know. We're hearing far none these days. People would rather just sit home and try to collect their money off of uh you know however they do it these days. I'm not really sure. But I work. So and to close, you've you've talked a little bit about your goal for the company in five years. Uh would love to hear what's what's your goal personally, um, on a personal level. Why are you doing all of this? Well, I didn't really grow up uh with best things at, at my at, you know, offered to me. We we were we weren't um lower income, you know, jumping from apartment to apartment, living with my mother. And I just want better for my children and then yep. their children, trying to pave a a future instead of just, you know, having to rely on dead end jobs. You know what I mean? Create an empire. Josh, thank you so much for for sharing your story. Um coming on Titan Talks and and sharing this with with all of our listeners really appreciate it got so much out of it and i'm sure they will as well so thank you no thank you for guys for uh inviting me it's been a pleasure um you know maybe we'll catch up again in a year or so